Today I'm going to go over my top 10 tips to share with you from Diablo 4 from my many hours of playing it so far. That being said, don't forget to subscribe if you like this type of content and let's get right into the video. My first tip for you is going to be to pick Barbarian. Nah, just kidding. Tip number one is going to be to get your horse. Now let me explain what I'm talking about. So in Diablo 4, something awesome you can get is your horse here. Uh, or your mount, whatever you want to call it. And it's going to allow you to actually get around the map much quicker. When you're outside of town, you get three speed boosts that regenerate over time. Uh, so I'll show you how that works here. Uh, you got one, you got two... You got three and those regenerate over time and then as well when you want to enter battle if you find like a big group of monsters that you want to fight you just drop off boom and you're in right fast super simple but the horse is really important it gets you places so much faster and you're gonna want to want one your friends are gonna have it and you're gonna be mad because you can't keep up with them so it's really simple. You're going to want to push through Act 1, Act 2, and Act 3. Start of Act 4, you're going to go to Donnan, uh, and he's going to have a side quest for you, and you're going to get your horse, and it's going to be amazing. That brings us right into our second tip, and that is going to be Altars of Lilith. So you're going to see these things on the map, uh, Altar of Lilith. Um, they're going to be put all around. There's about 180 of them. And they're going to be really important for you to get because they do multiple things. The first thing that they do is they're going to get you stat points. So things like dexterity, strength, stamina, all these different things, right? You know, that your character needs. And Altars of Lilith grant that. And so 180 times you get all of those huge, huge bonuses. It's going to be really important that you get those. Now, the second thing that those give you are going to be Renown points. Now, you're probably wondering what Renown is. Now, Renown is this right here. So, you have it spread into different regions. And what it gives you is different things. Gold, skill points, uh, potion capacity, and obols. So, obols and paragon points, those are later down the road that you can use to buy things. But the biggest thing to me is the potion capacity. Um, being able to have, you know, five, six, seven, eight, nine potions makes a huge difference because you cannot buy them in this game. They come with you and you have a max of four to start out. So when you have a max of eight, it makes a like ginormous difference. So remember, renown is very important. Do not neglect it. Tip number four comes at strongly with these xp potions you're going to be grinding for levels it's part of rpg games right it's super important and these things um they're actually quite amazing you can actually increase five percent xp for 30 minutes um that's really important you can do this right before you fight a boss before before you know you're hitting a huge mob and really um amp up that xp bonus now you can actually craft these things and I'm going to show you how to do that. I'm not ready yet. So what you're going to do is you're going to come to your alchemist, you're going to come up to them, and you are going to go to the elixirs, and it will tell you what it requires, and you can go ahead and craft those, and you can have those in your, in your inventory to always be popping, um, so that you can be increasing XP so it doesn't take so long to level up. Tip number five comes in at aspects. You're not going to want to waste these things. So there's multiple ways you can get aspects. One is by doing dungeons. Every time you do a dungeon for the first time, it's going to give you an aspect. There's about 116 in the game. Um, and you can toggle if you want your class or not. Um, 
So I just want to show my barbarian ones, right? You can apply these ones very safely, no big deal. Now, you can also get aspects from legendary items and you can basically take them off those legendary items, but you can only do it once, so be careful because once you do it and you um, put it on an item, it's there forever or you'll lose it. So it's really important that you um, make sure you're using it on gear you're gonna use for a long time. Tip number six. So, do not be afraid of respecting. okay? I know in other games, like specifically Diablo 2, you only get to do it twice on a character. And so you don't want to do it till you really know what you want to do with your character and whatnot. But in this game, something that they've done is really awesome. You can actually just go ahead and uh, respec everything. You, you're able to do that. It's pretty cheap, honestly. And they make it intended so that you're doing that as many times as possible. Um, and if you want to change your build, whatever, no big deal. Don't be afraid of it. Go for it. If you want to change your build or you did something wrong, just switch it. Don't sit there on a build you don't want to have. It's super easy, super simple, and gold is not a problem at all, I would say. Tip number seven is going to be push for world tier three. It's really important. Um, you can see uh, I'm loaded in on world tier one. But it's really important that you get to World Tier 3 because it unlocks so much of the game. It's really important. So basically, you want to hit level 50. You want to do the Cathedral of Light, which will unlock that for you. And you want to go straight to World Tier 3 because you get huge XP bonuses, way better items. You get so many different options. You get, you know, um, can unlock Nightmare Dungeons from that point. The game really progresses. It, it becomes way easier to level up. You really can gear yourself up. And so really hitting on pushing for World Tier 3. Don't stay around in World Tier 1 or 2. Um, and yeah, you'll be good from there. Tip number eight, do the campaign. It is super simple. It is very easy to follow. It's not like a hard campaign to follow. They give you these little yellow quests and I can show you that here. Uh, actually, doesn't because I've completed it, it doesn't appear mine, but they're right here, these yellow quests. And um, you can actually pin them so you know where to go as well. Um, super easy. You can pin anything by just right-clicking with your mouse. Um, and it will show you the quickest path to go. Um, you can see that there um, on the map. And if you want to make it bigger, it will show you the path here as well. So, the reason I say do the campaign is because a lot of people there's so much end game content there's so much to do but you got to understand one the campaign gives you very important um, understanding of the game and it's an awesome story and it gives you great XP so you're just gonna want to do it and the end game content there's no structure right you can do it however you want the campaign has structure so follow that you're gonna want to do it it's so much fun you're gonna kill yourself if you don't do it and then you have to go do it later you're not gonna want to do that and it's the easiest if you do it early on because this game scales with level um, it doesn't get easier the higher level you get the monsters just stay level with you um, so kind of interesting there but it's gonna be a lot easier if you do it just straight off the get-go I would just hit the whole quest before you do anything else tip number nine nueve now this one's a big one and it's a little contradictory to what i said before with respiking how i said uh, gold doesn't matter that's true you should never like the amount of gold it takes to respect is doesn't matter it doesn't matter at all but as far as gold for items in the end game it's really important things cost money you can't have two builds it doesn't work like that in this game um, so you need to be careful because items can cost a lot of money um, you don't want to be too hasty and so just make smart choices uh, just know that gold is a really real thing and um, you don't want to be too willy-nilly with it or you might put yourself in a bad situation my last tip would be use an interactive map okay so what I mean by that is there's interactive maps that actually show you where all these Altar of Liliths are and where all the dungeons are. 
um, and where all the TPs are, okay? All those waypoints. Um, oops. Tip number 10, the last tip, is going to be use an interactive map. What I mean by that is it's going to show you Altars of Lilith, it's going to show you dungeons and what dungeon it is and what it grants you. And it's also going to show you these wave points if you don't have them all. So it's going to be really important because specifically for the Altars of Lilith, how I said those are so important to get, you don't know where they are. Going randomly around the map trying to find them would take you years. Just use an interactive map. It'll tell you exactly where on the map it is. And you can go dungeon to altar, dungeon to altar, getting your aspects and your renown and your skill points all at the same time. Super simple. That's all there is to it. These are the 10 tips that I think are most crucial at the moment. Um, there's many more to come and I do want to share with those with you. Um, and so make sure to hit the subscribe button, hit that notifications bell so you can be alerted when I give you those next tips. Um, thanks for now. See ya.